Hey everyone, this is Shaman from Rocket Ship HQ, the mobile user acquisition firm that lets you grow in a capital efficient manner. My guest today is Eric Seufert. Eric is the founder of the mobile marketing consultancy Heracles, founder of the mobile marketing community Quantmar, founder of mobiledevmemo.com, author of the book Premium Economics, and one of the foremost experts on mobile user acquisition in the world today. Eric started his career as an analyst at Skype and went on to work with gaming companies like Digital Chocolate, Gray Area, and Vuga before heading up user acquisition for Rovio. Eric has also consulted with over 30 app development companies on their growth and developed the growth and user acquisition platform Agamemnon, which was acquired by Network in 2017. Eric is one of the people I look to for advice. He's been on an episode of the How Things Grow show titled A Brief History of U Mobile User Acquisition just as well. I'm very excited to welcome Eric Seufert to the Mobile User Acquisition Show. Eric, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much for having me. Wonderful, Eric. Thrilled to have you uh, on the show. And in this episode, we're going to talk about one of the very many things that you're very good at one of the very many things that you are considered an expert in, uh, which is applying analysis and analytics to mobile apps. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about how to model out DAU for an app, and we'll dive into what that means. But before that, can you tell us why it is important to systematically manage growth for an app via a quantitative model? Yeah, sure. That's a that's a very good question. So, um, and I think you kind of uh, answer it uh, in the way that you asked it. Like, why would you want to systematically manage growth, right? So, if you think about a growth team that um, isn't managing growth to some standard or some projection or some um, business requirement, then they're just sort of doing stuff, right? They're just sort of um, bringing new users into the app or to the product, but uh, uh, without any kind of eye towards a business objective, right? Um, I think, uh, you know, and, and it, depending on the sort of elevation that a person sits within a growth team or within a company, this may or may not be something that they have to worry about. But like, you know, myself having kind of managed a bunch of growth teams in my career, um, you know, being able to sort of um, uh, execute against, uh, against some sort of business objective, which kind of, um, is yoked to the overall, uh, success and growth of the company, uh, is, is the imperative of someone who leads a growth team, right? So if you think about like what a growth team does, it's really two things. One, it exploits some set of channels to bring new users into a product and it, and it optimizes those. Um, and that's kind of like the ongoing data mm -hmm. today. And then the other thing is it, um, it, uh, it, it builds towards uh, some, uh, some model or some expectation of, of um, revenue growth, right? Mm -hmm. And for mobile first companies, uh, you know, user acquisition is, that, uh, is singularly that, um, that engine of growth. It's, it's the, the source of new users. And, and you might have other stuff on top of that. You might have like ISO and you might have kind of like home strategies. And you might have like brand building stuff. But for mobile first companies, like the, that, the sort of like singular driver of, uh, revenue growth is uh, user acquisition, and so um, you can't be doing that um, in a, in a in a sort of non uh, methodical, non systematic way. Just because um, you know, then then there's no way to to sort of like ensure or sort of like scientifically implement that growth model that you have, which is um, you know, which which is made up of those business objectives, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's so crucial to have that be quantified and very objectively laid out, as you pointed out. So what would you recommend be the key inputs or elements to such a quantitative model uh, that a company or an app might use to project out DAU growth? Um, sure. So I, I wrote an article about this a few months ago. It's called like uh, high growth, low growth, no growth. And it kind of goes through. Um, so there's a bunch of, I shared a bunch of code and you can kind of run the code yourself or it's, yeah. it's like a Python script um, and kind of like run these uh, simulations. But I, you know, I kind of walked through that, that problem set um, in the post. So like the idea would be, Hey, <clears throat> we kind of have some sense of how these, how, like if you, if you think about the user base, right? Like on any given day, if you just look at the user base as a whole, 
like um, as a monolith, you'd say, okay, this, this user base generates this much money a day, yeah. right? So maybe yesterday the user base generated this much money, right? Yeah. And my goal is to make, you know, that much money times two uh, by the end of the, by the end of the month. Um, well, if I know kind of on a daily basis that how that user base changes in size, I can kind of guess, or I can kind of uh, build some sort of like primitive model to see if I'm going to get to that times two value by the end of the month, right? So then when you, when you break that user base out into like it's atomic units, which are just users, right? You can group them in ways that help you um, understand how those um, how those groups are gonna are gonna um, make money and how the money is gonna change, how the revenue is gonna change over time, and also how those groups are gonna decay and uh, shrink over time, just as the natural sort of like via the natural sort of like gravitational pull of retention, right? The retention decay. Right. And so once you know that, if you've said, okay, I've got this monolith, I've broken it out into the atomic units, which are like cohorts, um, grouped by acquisition source, grouped by country, grouped by platform, grouped by whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And I see how those, th this, this user base as it was yesterday, if I didn't add any new users, I could sort of understand just based on my understanding of, uh, just, just based on my sort of like historical uh, precedent of retention for those groups, how many of those users would exist by the end of the month, right? And so from there, yeah you could see, okay, well, this is how much money I'm going to make. Like, given that no new users came into the user base, only these users existed, grouped yeah. all these different ways, grouped in ways that allow me to kind of, like, apply retention profiles to them, I, I can see how my revenue is going to shrink over time or how it's, how, how it's going to evolve over time, and I'll, I can kind of, like, know or at least project and sort of, like, um, estimate how much, how much money that existing user base would generate at the end of the month. And then I could see like, what's the shortfall? Like, what's the gap? Right. And once I know the gap, if I know the retention profile, then I have a rough idea of how these different groups monetize. Then I, then I understand how many new users I have to add every day yeah. in order to hit my revenue target. Um, and then I can estimate how much that costs. And then I can yeah. sort of work that into an overall p and model. And I can work that into an overall, um, you know, company model. And so that's, you know, starting from that atomic unit of the user, you sort of like right. roll up all the way to like, hey, we've got a business here and this is what the business looks like. Right. So I like your phrasing of the atomic unit of the user. So you have a certain number of users coming in from different sources and they decay over time, according to, as you phrased it, the gravitational pull of the retention curve. And you say, right, this many users remain after X number of days. And this is the shortfall we need to make up for to hit a certain DAU target. Does that sound about right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Gotcha. As a follow-up question on that, Eric, so as you said, the users, the atomic unit, so to speak, you can break down by the different dimensions you said, right? So you can break it down by country, you can break it down by uh, source or even campaigns, right? Uh, I'm curious though, what level of granularity, how do you decide what level of granularity makes sense for a specific app? Uh, and I ask that because, well, you could basically say, well, I'm going to pick users who come in from one specific creative, and maybe that's like five users a day, and that's not very meaningful. And you might also say, well, I'm going to take all users coming into an app, which could be 10,000 users, all of whom have very different properties, right? So what, how do you think about the level of granularity at which you recommend breaking down the atomic unit of like users to model out their DAU in the manner that you just described. Mm. That's a that's a really great question. So I think the way you do that is to determine which um, of those dimensions are actionable from a user acquisition standpoint. Because if you think about this exercise being um, a way to come up with an um, imperative for UA. So like if you think about it, this, this exercise is basically telling me how many new users I need to bring in to hit my target, right? right. So right. the whole point of this is to tell me, hey, I need this many users tomorrow, this many users the day after that, this many users the day after that, all the way through to the end of the month to hit my revenue target. And that's, that's my user acquisition um, roadmap, so to speak. That's, that's my user acquisition imperative, right? right? So I've got now I've got this imperative, which is essentially a, some set of marching orders about how many new users I need to bring in. So now what I want to do is I want to break that user base out into these um, groups that are targetable on a UA basis um, right. so that I can sort of analyze their retention profiles and their monetization profiles um, kind of independently. And then that way I'll be able to build this model in a way that, um, that uh, agglomerates all that up 
into that top line number that I need to add, right? Because I mean, you could think about like, okay, well, if my users from the US that I acquired on Facebook monetize and, and retain like much, much, much better than, you know, users that I acquired in Germany um, from, you know, Google AdWords, then, then I need fewer of those or I, you know, I then, then I do uh, of the, the German ones to hit my goal. And, and, then, and then you sort of can figure out and, and kind of like deduce what the best mix of those users is based on cost, right? Right. Um, and so the very easiest implementation, or the, let's say the, the, the least kind of sophisticated implementation of this would just to take the whole user base, um, again, like as a monolith, and then just say, okay, well, the user base shrinks this much every day without any new, any new users, and so I need to add this many new users, like, it, you know, at this sort of, like, global level. Right. Um, you know, and, and then that'll get me to where I'm going. The only problem with that is, like, you don't really know what the company position of that user base is and so like you'd have to let's say that it was 30 percent made up of facebook users and you know 30 percent made up of adwords users and you know 30 percent made up of uac users or whatever you'd have to try to somehow match that composition right. in the way that you acquired users now when you break all these when you break the user base out by groups then you can be strategic about like well actually i only need to acquire this many facebook users because i know how they monetize and retain um versus acquiring this many users on google because they retain and and monetize worse and so I'll, i i can get to my uh, goal, um, uh, you know, with this sort of like shorter path, just by going with like the higher quality users that that probably cost more. But like you bake all of this into like a broader PL model, and then you just get sort of scientific about how you break this out and uh, optimize the composition. Right. Yeah, I think that's a very helpful way of thinking about it uh, in terms of how actionable all of this granularity is from a user acquisition perspective. And I think that's something that's a reminder that. I certainly need from time to time because it's easy to dive into the models, but I think it's helpful to zoom out and think about what is it that we are trying to achieve through these models uh, as it were, right? Cool, Eric. Uh, so the, I think that was extremely instructive. So thank you for being on this episode of the Mobile User Acquisition Show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Wonderful. For more tips, pointers, and strategies from the leading edge of mobile user acquisition, subscribe to our YouTube channel right here or check out our blog, rocketshiphq.com slash blog. Thank you.